evening, True Vine family and friends. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We want to welcome you to our True Vine Sunday School on Wednesday. But just before we get started, we'd like to open with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. Again, for this is the day that you've made, and Father, we rejoice and we are glad in it. Thank you for the bountiful blessings that you continue to bestow on all of our lives. Thank you for being our God, for being our protector, for being our, our provider. You are God. There is none like you in all this earth. And for that, we give you glory. We pray now that your spirit will dwell with us as we get into this lesson. We pray that the things that are said will give you honor and give you glory. God, we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And I trust that everyone has been having a great week thus far. And even in this coronavirus crisis, we know that God is still in control. God is still good. And most of all, God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Well, we're going to get right into our Sunday school lesson for today. And our topic on today is seeking a champion of justice. Seeking a Champion of Justice. And our key verse is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 1. And I'll take time and read that verse uh, for your hearing. I'll be reading from the NIV version. It says, Here is my servant, whom I uphold, and chose one whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nation. So when we look at our topic, seeking a champion of justice, let's look at these two words. First of all, champion. So when we think about a champion, uh, we often immediately connect to a champion and a certain sport. A champion is defined as someone who has defeated or surpassed all rivals in a competition. And then when we look at the word justice, Justice is defined as receiving just treatment, receiving just treatment, or the rendering to each person that which is due to him or her. Or in other words, doing what is fair and doing what is right. So to set this uh, lesson off on this evening, I'm going to read the introduction uh, for you. And in this introduction, it's going to help us to dive a little bit deeper into what that champion and that justice really means. And we all know that uh, in the spiritual realm that we do have a champion, and that champion's name is Jesus Christ himself. And as a matter of fact, you know, just a few years ago, the, the Lord blessed me to be able to write and to compose a song. And the name of that song was simply, He's My champion. And, and going into some of those lyrics, it says that, that Jesus never loses a fight. Amen. Can somebody give God praise that, that Jesus never, never, ever loses a fight? So, so in, in, in one way or another, we all have had experiences involving vying to best others to become champions or have championed the cause of others. Those experiencing persecution and oppression long for someone to defend them and to support their desire for justice or freedom. So, so as a people, we have had those same experiences. We've had people who have, have fought for us. They have advocated for us so that we could be free. And, and, and that work, it is not to go unnoticed. We are appreciative and we are grateful for those champions who have come before us. And in today's lesson, God is going to use the prophet Isaiah to declare that the champion, the real champion, is, is coming. Amen. So there are uh, three topics or three points to this lesson that we want to deal with on today. And that first topic is going to be the servant's credentials. The servant's credentials. And, and keep in mind, when we talk about that servant, we are talking in the context of Jesus Christ, who is not yet on the scene, but the Isaiah, the prophet, is foretelling. 
He is prophesying what is to come. And that servant is the Messiah himself, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read uh, from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 4 from the NIV version. The first four verses, it says, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit in him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reel, a bruised reed rather, he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. There's that word, justice. He will not filter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on the earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope in him. So the servant's credentials. This lets me know that this champion, this servant that God is sending, God himself has personally chose this person. He's appointed by God, this servant is approved by God, and this servant is supported by God. And, and this champion's ministry will be quite gentle. It will be a quiet ministry and a submissive ministry. So, so in vast contrast to what we've experienced in our world today, our world leaders do the, they operate in the opposite of how this servant will come. Instead of them operating in a spirit of quietness and meekness, our world leaders are operating in a spirit of chaos. Instead of our, our world leaders acting in a spirit of gentleness, they're now acting in a spirit that contends with power struggles and who is, is making the decisions and, and it's all about me and what I say as opposed to what the Spirit is saying. So this champion servant won't use his power to harm, but he'll bring encouragement and, and he'll bring comfort to those who have been mistreated and, and those who've been victimized. In other words, this servant will bring hope. Somebody needs hope today. So the question is, for you who are listening to this broadcast, for those of you who are watching, the question becomes this today. Do you have hope? Well, let me remind you that there is hope today. And if you have made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, if you have made him Savior in your heart, if he is sitting and ruling on the throne of your heart, then guess what, my friends? You have a blessed hope. Amen. In fact, the old hymn says we have a, a, a blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I, I am an heir and you are an heir of salvation. We've been purchased of God, born of his spirit and, and, and washed in his blood. Oh, you ought to just reminisce and, and, and thank God that, that you have a blessed hope, that you have a, a blessed assurance on today. Amen. The second topic point is the servant's commission. And so I read now from Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 through 7. Reading from the NIV version, it says this. This is what the God, the Lord says, the creator of the heavens, who stretch them out, who spread out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Amen. So the servant's commission, God knew that his servant, the Messiah, would experience difficulty 
and even rejection while executing the task. And he knew the trouble that would come. Not only the trouble, but he knew that this Messiah, this servant would be tempted, that, that temptation would rear its ugly head. But, but the good news was that God hath already assured his servant with his personal words of peace. And, and my friends, even in times that we experience tribulation, even in times where we experience trials, we have to hear those personal words from our God that says, you know what? I am with you. God says today, friends, I am with you. I am in control. I am your help. In fact, the word says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. And friends, we ought to do that today because we know that all of our help comes from the Lord. And, and for someone, again, who's listening and, and watching today, I believe that God is saying this to you as well. God is speaking right now, even in this time of trouble, even in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, God still says, I am with you. I am in control and I am your help. So, because the truth of the matter is this, God says that I have spoken, I have given a commission to this world, and, and, and no devil in hell, no sickness, no disease, no virus on this earth can stop the gospel from going forth. And those whom God has called, he also equips. Those whom God has called, he also empowers. Friends, those whom God has called, he sustains us. Amen. So as believers in the body of Christ, we have been commissioned to champion God's plan to establish justice for all. Yes, my friends, as Christians, it is our duty to commit to serve as a source of encouragement not discouragement. You know, oftentimes we find people putting one another down, stepping on their heads, throwing them under the bus, if you will. But God has called his people to be a source of encouragement. Encouragement to the oppressed. Encouragement to those who are disheartened. All the while pointing the loss to him for freedom and for spiritual bondage and blindness. Amen. And our third and final point on today, the servant's guarantor. And we all know that a guarantor is a person who has stamped or placed a guarantee on something. So, you know, the word of God is true and whatever God has said and whatever he's established, it's a guarantee. If God has promised, he promised he's going to heal your body, it's a guarantee. If God has promised to open doors that no man can shut, it's a guarantee. You see, the word says in Matthew chapter 6 and 33, simply this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and, and everything else will be added unto you. Not only is that a guarantee, not only is that his covenant, that's God's word. It's his promise to you today. So in these final verses, Isaiah chapter 42 Verses 8 and 9. It reads like this. God says, I am the Lord. This is my name. I will not yield or share my glory to another or my praise unto idols. See, the former things have taken place. The new things I declare before they spring into being, I announce them to you. So God has assured his servant of his assistance and his power to accomplish the Great Commission. The guarantee that the servant's work will be successfully carried into effect is the Lord himself. God pledged both his name and his honor. And in this context today, my friends, God declares his uniqueness above prophecy. His uniqueness above the sham gods of idolatry. 
whom his people were guilty of worshiping. So let me put a point there. We need to be careful about the things that we worship, those little gods. Sometimes we find ourselves uh, worshiping uh, our jobs, spending so much time on that job that we don't spend enough time in God's word or even the houses that the God has blessed us with. We find ourselves worshiping those things, the cars that we drive, our, our big bank accounts. But God is saying here that he gives his glory to no one. What a mighty God we serve. So, so for a closing thought, I, I want to you to consider this. Jesus Christ, who is that servant, he is that Messiah, was and is the champion of of justice. So, so anything that has been made wrong, Jesus, the champion, will make it right. Any crooked thing, Jesus, the champion, will make straight. And, and, and those high places, those haughty things, those haughty, arrogant attitudes, the Messiah is going to bring down. Hallelujah. The servant fulfilled this task through his teaching his healing, and his sacrificial death. And his ultimate sacrifice made salvation possible. Freeing from spiritual bondage all who accepted what he did on the cross. And because of our salvation, my brothers and sisters, we can look forward to the future with hope for the establishment of a kingdom where justice will prevail. My friends, no matter what you're going through, no matter the, 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 the things that have caused inequalities in your life and discriminations in your life, be reminded in this lesson on today that justice will prevail. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for the hope of a kingdom where justice will one day reign supreme. As we praise and thank you for this promise, use us, your servants, to make it a present day reality for those who are suffering around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, we thank you for being online with us today and we pray that the lesson and the words that have been shared will encourage your heart will give you inspiration as you go throughout the rest of this weekend. We want to just remind you that uh, Sunday is that special day. For Sunday, we will celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was crucified, dead and buried. But on the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. So we want to invite you to come back and be a part of our online experience as we worship the Father in spirit and in truth and celebrate the resurrection of our living Christ. Join us on Sunday for an experience like none other as we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. You have a blessed evening. May God bless you and keep you will always be our prayer.